Myself, Dr. Jibran Ahmad presents to you Simply Pathology and today we are back with a very very important session. Today we are going to read about the recent advance 27 and a very major update has come in with regards to invasion in pulmonary adenocarcinoma and this question or this particular update is highly anticipated in this year's MD DNB examination which is going to be conducted in the months of September, October and November. Okay. So, this can be asked as a long answer question okay? because uh, this particular update it changes a lot of WHO criteria of invasion and WHO criteria of adenocarcinoma in situ which was given in 2021 and all those parameters are being redefined and further refined. Okay? So, you have to pay a lot of attention in this particular lecture because this question 100% is going to come at least in the standard institutes like AIMS, PGI Chandigarh, okay, in all these standard institutes, this is a must question that is going to come. So, as I have already said that there have been a lot of updates with regards to the invasion in pulmonary adenocarcinoma. So, what is the main reason for update? The main reason for update is a poor reproducibility of histological assessment of invasion in case of pulmonary adenocarcinoma. So, in short, I would like to make you understand. Suppose there is a case which some pathologist has diagnosed it as adenocarcinoma in situ, but other path, you know, but, but other pathologists, you know, they have diagnosed the same case as an invasive adenocarcinoma. Okay. So, there is the same case, okay. One set of pathologists, they are diagnosing the same case as in situ carcinoma and another set of pathologists, they are basically diagnosing it as invasive adenocarcinoma and both of them, they are using the WHO criteria that was given in 2021 for defining adenocarcinoma in situ. So, absolutely there has been some, you know, overlooking or there is some amount of uh, you know, you know, uh, some lapses are there, okay, uh, you know, in the morphological uh, criteria for diagnosis, some, you know, some lapses are there somewhere, because of that, there is a poor reproducibility, and why this is important, because it might, uh, you know, uh, affect the patient's prognosis, so that is why, that is why this update is very important clinically. So, let us first try to understand that what was the WHO criteria of adenocarcinoma in situ, which was given in 2021. It was defined as a localized small adenocarcinoma which was measuring less than equal to 3 centimeters with growth restricted to pre-existing alveolar structures. Okay. Okay. So, what do you mean when growth is along the alveolar wall? What is that pattern called as? It is called as lepidic pattern. But one thing has to be kept in mind. Usually, this growth which is occurring along, suppose this is the alveolar wall. So, the growth occurs in the form of monolayer, a single layer of growth is happening. So, usually the growth is there in a monolayer and sometimes minor cellular tufting. So, suppose in the entire, you know, lesion, if a very small area is showing tufting or, you know, multilayering. So, focal areas of multilayering or focal areas of tufting, they are allowed, okay. So, it is not a problem. Along with that, the adenocarcinoma in situ, they should not show any sign of stromal invasion. They should not show any sign of vascular invasion. They should not show any sign of alveolar space invasion or pleural invasion. There should be no necrosis and there should be no papillary or micropapillary pattern. Okay, they should not be there. So, this was the criteria which was given by the WHO for diagnosis of adenocarcinoma in situ in WHO 2021. Now, in you know, it is not like the entire criteria has been changed. Most of the criteria are kept in place, but there has been few refinements and adenocarcinoma in situ has been further subclassified that we are going to see in today's lecture. So, basically, what is the problem or what is the issue? I have already spoken about that in short, but now I am going to elaborate. The problem happened with certain cases, okay, which were diagnosed as adenocarcinoma in situ. And the same cases were diagnosed as invasive adenocarcinoma by other pathologists. Okay? So, why was this poor reproducibility? So, using the current WHO 2021 guidelines of reporting, a subset of cases were reported as invasive and the same subset were reported as non-invasive by an expert group of pathologists. So, how is that possible? If, you know, if suppose today you go to one pathologist, okay, 
they say that it is invasive adenocarcinoma tomorrow you go for a second opinion with other uh, to other pathologist he is saying that it is non invasive so the patient is becoming confused because the prognosis differs considerably between these two entities okay so is the treatment so that is why this was observed in several uh, you know such cases and therefore it was mandatory to bring this update so that the pathologist the practicing histopathologist they have in mind what to consider while dealing with such cases so to you know to understand this that what the problem is we have to understand three concepts what are this concept the number one concept is the concept of collapse okay second concept is the concept of stromal response to pulmonary adenocarcinoma and the last concept is the effect of tangential tissue cutting so first we will understand the concept of collapse collapse over here we are thinking about the concept of alveolar collapse now during surgery when you are doing the surgical resection of the tumor okay so in that case it can cause a surgical collapse also called as a iatrogenic collapse okay it is also called as iatrogenic collapse okay wherein what happens the alveoli collapses because of the surgery okay or they can be one other way because of which they can be alveolar collapse that is biological biological means the collapse of the alveoli occurs because of the pathological processes which are preceding or accompanying the neoplastic process okay it is because of that now both of these things can lead to reduction of air blood or lymph okay inside the alveoli leading to alveolar collapse or atelectasis and this atelectasis whenever the alveolus is collapsing there is in folding like this the alveolar walls they try to fold on top of each other and because of this alveolar wall in folding it is distorting the morphological or histopathological picture so what you see under the microscope it completely changes when the alveolar wall is in folding okay so this is creating what is called as a pseudo acnr or a pseudo papillary structure so this is a false so it is giving as if an appearance that you know gland has formed or for example you can see that you know you will see that the entire lesion has been converted into a papilla like structure okay but this is false this is a pseudo acnr or a pseudo papillary con you know configuration which is seen in adenocarcinoma in situ and 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 many many of such cases okay they are fulfilling the current who criteria for invasive papillary and acnr carcinoma and as a result there is an over diagnosis of adenocarcinoma in situ which with such pseudo acnr and pseudo papillary structure and as a result what is happening as a result there is an over diagnosis so there is a fall the, you know these are intact alveolus which is forming you know gland like structure these are intact alveolus which is forming you know papilla like structure these are not the true acni and this is not the true papilla so it is it, so what i mean to say that pseudo acnr and pseudo papillary structures are, are basically the, the, you know they are not uh, uh, showing invasion or they are not representing invasion okay so so this is one problem that is happening because of the alveolar wall infolding it is giving a perception that there is false gland formation false papilla structure so the pathologist is thinking that this is a case of invasive adenocarcinoma and there is a over diagnosis so this is the first problem the second problem is the stromal response to pulmonary adenocarcinoma now although we know that any kind of tumor usually in the gi tract whenever a tumor is growing so there is a stromal response to that tumor usually in the form of excessive collagen formation that is called as desmoplastic response okay so although it is known from before it is already known that basically uh, the stromal response to you know carcinomas they produce desmoplasia but the current who 2021 has not laid a lot of importance on desmoplasia result of a reaction to the tumor cell invasion and proliferation so desmoplasia can be regarded as a sign of invasion this is what i mean to say it forms one of the important criteria of true invasion and remember in desmoplasia remember there is an excessive amount of collagen fiber deposition along with 
increased elastin fiber now elastin fibers may increase or may not increase okay and there in these elastin fibers they are basically secreted in layered pattern so there is some amount of layering is there of such elastin which is formed okay but remember this collagen excess of collagen and elastin deposition is as a reaction to the invasion so usually if desmoplasia is not present then it is unlikely that the tumor is invasive this is what the point is third important thing is the effect of tangential tissue sectioning so during the tissue processing okay so if you cut the tissue tangentially in certain cases it makes the monolayer cells of adenocarcinoma in situ that these cells that i was talking about these monolayer cells because of some tangential sectioning it might be that this might overlap with each other and as a result you might see multi layering you might see multi layering okay so this multi layering because of tangential cutting is a pseudo multi layering it is not a true multi layering but according to the current who criteria it might fulfill the who criteria for micro papillary carcinoma and the adenocarcinoma in situ okay might be over diagnosed as micro papillary carcinoma because of this pseudo multi layering which occurs as a result of tissue sectioning in a tangential pattern because of the tangential tissue sectioning so it usually occurs in adenocarcinoma in situ and such changes that means i'm talking about pseudo multi layering this pseudo or false multi layering such changes are very focal okay and remember this pseudo multi layering should not uh, you know should be this 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 concept of pseudo multi layering has to be kept in mind and remember such pseudo multi multi layering they are focal in nature so this should be kept in mind and it should not be given a lot of importance while assessing invasion this is what the point is that that the concept of pseudo multi layering of false multi layering has to be kept in mind while you are diagnosing a case of adenocarcinoma in situ because the tangential tissue sectioning might give rise to uh, you know focally certain appearance giving an appearance that multi layering is there and if you look at the current who criteria that multi layering is fulfilling that uh, you know the the criteria for micro papillary carcinoma so there is a over diagnosis and these are the reasons these are the three important reasons that we have discussed that can give a false impression of an adenocarcinoma in situ being a adenocarcinoma and that was the reason why there is a the why there is a poor reproducibility among the pathologist regarding a single case so how to resolve these shortcomings how do you resolve them so we can resolve them or rather it has been resolved by a ex group of expert histopathologist by modifying the morphological guidelines for adenocarcinoma in situ so right now if you see the adenocarcinoma in situ there is a classification so there is an adenocarcinoma in situ a general classification is there and there is a sub classification which is taking into consideration if there is collapse of the alveoli which might be either because of iatrogenic cause or it might be because of biological reasons fourthly the criteria of true invasion has been slightly refined i would say okay criteria for alveolar filling growth has been given very clearly okay so these are some of the changes and i will discuss about them in detail so first thing is that before i go into the details of these guidelines given i want to make you know you understand how to prevent the over diagnosis of adenocarcinoma in situ the collapsed variety okay as an invasive so how do we prevent this over diagnosis of collapsed ais okay so if you come across a collapsed adenocarcinoma in situ the first thing you do you can go for a ck7 staining now what ck7 does it is going to highlight the tumor cells okay the adenocarcinoma cells they are going to highlight but what is very important suppose if this is the tumor a regular you know a regular staining see suppose this is the alveoli and this is the tumor cells lining the alveolus okay so suppose the tumor has not invaded okay it is not an invasive variety of the tumor so the ck7 is going to highlight these tumor cells the ck7 is going to highlight the ck7 is going to highlight these tumor cells in a very regular homogeneous pattern so the tumor cells will be highlighted and they will reflect a regular homogeneous staining pattern proving that such uh, you know such uh, uh, you know patterns or architectural patterns like pseudo asnr and pseudo papillary pattern is because of the collapse of the alveoli and it is not because of true invasion so ck7 staining will show a regular homogeneous staining pattern 
okay in case of adenocarcinoma in situ so this is number one way that you can show second is you can go for elastin staining for example you can go for van giesen staining now the presence what is the important now remember elastin the presence of elastin is not at all signifying whether invasion has occurred or not it is just signifying the presence of pre-existing alveolar wall and if the pre-existing alveolar walls they are intact okay then it is suggestive of adenocarcinoma in situ because elastin by itself is not synthesized by epithelial cell uh, you know epithelial tumors so if you see along the alveolus if you see the you know fragmented small segments of elastin fibers lining the alveolus okay if you see along this elastin staining that means the, your alveolar walls are intact the tumor has not invaded the alveolar walls okay so presence of you know small segmented elastin fiber is indicative of pre-existing alveolar wall that is the tumor cell has not invaded the alveolar walls are intact that is the only significance of this elastin staining also sometimes there can be a focal increase in the stroma okay which does not equate to desmoplasia because again if you do the elastin staining the stromal increase is mainly due to elastin signifying a thickened alveolar wall but this is not equated to desmoplasia because in desmoplasia if you see along with other features of invasion desmoplasia mainly carries or mainly is, is formed because of deposition of collagen fibers elastin may be there may not be there okay but only an increase of elastin is not signifying desmoplasia this is what my point is and remember adenocarcinoma they are of adenocarcinoma in situ they are of two types nogochu type a and b the type a variety is the one where the alveolar walls are very thin and the type b variety is the one where the alveolar walls are thick but such thick alveolar walls should not be mistaken for a stromal invasion or desmoplastic change you should do the elastin staining and in the elastin staining you will see that only there is an increase in elastin fibers not collagen so it is not signifying desmoplasia i hope this is crystal clear to everyone so if it is a case of an adenocarcinoma an invasive adenocarcinoma so in case of a classic or papillary acinar adenocarcinoma the ck7 staining pattern is very irregular because the ck7 is going to highlight the tumor cell and suppose the cells that have invaded so will you see a regular pattern like this no you will see that the tumor cells are scattered around okay you will see the tumor cells are scattered around in the stroma they have invaded the stroma that is going to highlight plus the alveolar walls will be distorted because of the tumor invasion so this regular pattern of staining of ck7 will no more be there once invasion has occurred so ck7 is very important in highlighting this second thing if you see okay second thing you see the tumor cells they do not produce elastin in a fragmented pattern that you see in case of pre-existing alveolar in case of adenocarcinoma in situ okay so that is also important so you will not see such fragmented pattern of elastin along the alveolar walls in that particular fashion you will not see anything once the tumor cell has invaded you will see that where the tumor cells are present you will not see any elastin around of them okay because they themselves are not producing elastin okay okay the third important thing is the